When first starting out in Star Citizen, you can feel spoilt for choice, with over 100 ships with different sizes, crew capabilities, and loadouts. So when you're a new player, what's actually worth grabbing? Today, we're gonna go over the five ships that you should grab when playing Star Citizen. Keep in mind, these vehicles are available to purchase in-game using in-game currency. And in Star Citizen, it is very easy to make in-game currency. But I always recommend that players buy a starter package, and then if you really, really, really enjoy the game, then consider supporting it with some extra purchases. All right, let's get started. As a new player, the most important ship choice you have is what ship you buy first. So the most optimal play is to get a ship that does a little bit of everything badly. This is the Aegis Avenger Titan. This is a decent small ship for a decent price that can get you from point A to point B, deliver small amounts of cargo, dogfight, and more. With a cool retro space shuttle design, it's also one of the most unique looking ships in the game. The Avenger Titan comes with a size four and two size three weapon hardpoints, as well as two missile racks, allowing it to have some pretty decent firepower as well, as well as its cargo capacity of eight SCU, so that you can get your foot in the door for delivery and cargo. What it gains with all of those things, it sacrifices any sort of specialty. It has a little bit of extra armor, but it doesn't really have maneuverability. But vehicles like this are perfect for players when they first want to start playing, so that they can actually figure out what they want to do in Star Citizen. You can buy this one for 50 US dollars or 70 US dollars if you buy this as part of a game package. If you already have a game package though, you can buy this one in game for a little under 800,000 UEC, which also makes it one of the most affordable ships in the game. Dogfighting is a huge part of Star Citizen, and it's something that you're going to encounter whether you want to or not. In that mind, you're going to want something that's going to be able to hit hard and get away fast. And for this, the best option is the Aegis Gladius. The biggest thing this ship has going for it is that it is the poster child of Squadron 42, meaning it is often the first ship to get tested and polished anytime a new combat mechanic is introduced into the game. Hosting three size three weapons and four missile racks, this thing can hit hard. But the biggest thing that it has is its maneuverability. It's a light fighter. This ship is able to get in, strafe your opponents, and get out if necessary. This vehicle, regardless of the patch, often ends up being one of the best, if not the best vehicles in its weight class. This one can be bought for a little over 1 million AUEC, or 90 US dollars. However, when it comes to military vehicles, so we're talking fighters, gunships, and whatnot, I wouldn't actually recommend pledging. Military vehicles in Star Citizen have something that we like to call the military tax, where they tend to cost 20 to 30% more than their non-military counterparts. But if you really want to get a light fighter, the Gladius is your bet. Maybe dogfighting isn't your style. Maybe you're a bit more on the industry side, or you just want to get a ship that's going to get you as much in-game money as you can as quickly as you can. Well, for that job, we've got the Prospector. The Miss Prospector is the solo mining ship. So one, it's going to teach you about mining mechanics, and two, it's going to make you money very quickly. It's also a ship that if you enjoy the gameplay mechanic, you'll actually continue to use the Prospector over time. The ship comes equipped with a size one mining laser, and this is what allows you to mine the large asteroids, either in asteroid fields or down on planets and moons. You can then extract them, take them to a refinery, and turn them into trade materials. On a bad day, you're probably gonna make 300K or more an hour with this vehicle, making it one of the most profitable things to do in game right now. And it's kind of entry level. It also has a little bit of defense coming equipped with two size one gimbaled weapons, which isn't enough to blow up a pirate, but it's enough to hit him and then run. Or you can just do what I like to do and try to fight them with your mining laser. This is your best ship to get your foot into industry or just make some money to get other ships. You can buy the Prospector in-game for a little over 2 million AUEC, but if you do want to pledge for it, it's 155 USD. You know you've got 42 cubic meters to pack full of profit. <laughs> We're talking pressurized and shock-resistant construction, so whatever you put in here comes out the same way. The next one is a little bit of a step up over the Avenger Titan. Eventually, you're going to want bigger and better, and that is the Freelancer. Commonly called the Space Truck, this is a vehicle that a lot of people dream of. 
for a lot of players, it's their first introduction to multi-crew gameplay. It has a ton of weapons and a ton of cargo space. But the best thing about it is that it's affordable and it's still a solid one-man ship. If you did want to try multi-crew gameplay, it does come with a manned turret featuring two size two guns, as well as four pilot-controlled size three guns and four missile racks. With this vehicle, you can expect to fight large bounties, do more cargo, do more looting. And because of the size of the cargo bay, you can also use it to store small ground vehicles. This means you can use vehicles like the ROC, meaning you can try out ground mining as well. Once you start getting larger than the Freelancer, you get to a point that you require multi-crew gameplay for these ships to become useful. You can buy the Freelancer in-game for a little under 1.7 million UEC, or you can pledge it for 110 USD. Before we get into the last ship, I'd like to make a couple of honorable mentions. First, we have the Arrow Light Fighter, which is very similar to the Gladius and for a lot of people is kind of a toss up between the two. We have the Cutlass Black, which fulfills a very similar role to the Freelancer, but you get a little bit less cargo. If you like the Avenger Titan, but you don't really like the look of it, maybe look at getting the Consolidated Outland Nomad. And if you're looking to get into the racing game, try out the Origin M50. All right, this one is the most important. The ship that every new player in Star Citizen should own, and it should be the first thing that you work towards. The Aegis Javelin comes in a cool 3,000 US dollars and is not currently available in game. Featuring capital sized weapons, capital sized components, and even a hangar to store your other ships, any new player would be lucky to use this vehicle. So there you have it. There are the ships that new players should look into when they're looking to play Star Citizen. All of these ships I've mentioned, with the exception of the Aegis Javelin, will help you get your foot in the game, get a little bit of AUEC, and learn how to play the game. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below what your favorite ship in the game is so far, or maybe one that I've missed that you think new players should get a hand on. Maybe you're a Herald or a Vanguard supporter. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. See you guys soon.